Okay, let's get to the SNL bail app, because I think that's a very interesting example of a situation where a, a radical, only a radical approach works. Only a radical approach is consistent. Because the gradual approach, which is taken by almost all think tanks, we heard about uh, free market think tanks today, almost all the free market think tanks say, well, of course we have to bail out the depositors. So, so our government guarantee have to bail them out, and then you try to reform them. Now, the reforms are pretty picky even to begin with, but I don't, I don't want to talk about that right at this moment. I want to talk about the bailout. Nobody knows how much the bailout is going to be. I mean, it's the, the estimate keeps rising about $20 billion every month or so. It started last year about $20 billion. It's now up to about 120 or 200 or whatever. Who knows? Because the thing is, the, um, the SNLs, a third of them are officially insolvent, and the rest of them are farm because they're are philosophically insolvent. So it's a question of how, when does the philosophy, when does the reality catch up with the philosophy? It could happen at any time. Uh, I think there's about $8 billion a month being withdrawn by shrewd people. Let's get out of this stuff. It seems to be collapsing around us. Let's get out and go into other things, money market funds or whatever. This is going to accelerate as the collapse accelerates. It could easily happen. So the government guarantee is very interesting because, why, why, because the government, this is part of the running debate in the Libertarian Party for many years over the de public debt. Uh, those of us who are, who are radicals in favor of repudiating the debt, so the answer is, gee, it's a contract. Who made the contract? The contract is made by the government with people who want to live off tax loot for the next 20 years. I don't consider that a valid Libertarian contract. It's sort of like a mafia contract. You and you get together and we'll shoot that guy over there. <laughs> so, the uh, the uh, Think of what was so. The, the, so the, interestingly enough, the the question of how, how they can, how the SNL will be bailed out. Everybody except maybe Mises Institute and one or two other groups are, are in favor of the bailout. Then the question is, how do you how do you arrange the bailout? Well, you can uh, establish and says, well, half of it will be paid by taxpayers. Or it won't be a tax, though, of course, like the saving, like the other tax on deposit was not a tax. That was supposed to be a fee. This is one of the ways. You know, but President Bush fulfills his, his pledge of no, no new taxes. You don't call it a tax. Tax is a bad word. Nobody likes taxes anymore. So you use the word fee. In this case, it would be an insurance premium. You raise the insurance premium on the other banks to pay off the unsound banks, which, of course, pushes up various marginal banks into unsoundness, you understand. That's one way. That that's half the, uh, the bailout funds are supposed to come from there. The other half will come from uh, borrowing. Uh, well, how do you, $50 billion is the estimate, be a lot more than that, I can assure you, before the thing is over. Now the question is, who's going to, how do you meet the Graham Rudman limits on deficits, uh, which is supposed to be moving down towards zero on a budget deficit question? Well, you do it by a very simple device. You, you just don't include it on the budget. It's an off-budget item. See, one great way to balance the budget is not include spending on the budget. I wish I could do that. <laughs> it's an off-budget item. <laughs> Well, you create a phony new outfit called a resolution, the Resolution Finance Corporation, something like that. And they float the bonds, and they wouldn't be officially part of the government, so it's not, it doesn't really count. One interesting thing is the third method, you see, which they don't mention, the way they could really pay off the depositors very seems very simple. This is really, of course, the foundation of the Fed power. It's to just print money and pay the, pay, pay the people with it, print the currency and give it to them. Why don't they do that? Why don't they print $200 billion and give it to the depositors and write the whole thing off? They could do it. There's no law against it. They've got the unlimited power to counterfeit, uh, which is the Fed. Uh, the reason they don't do it is kind of interesting, because if they do it, it'd be super, hooper duper inflationary, because people would then deposit the cash in various banks, and there'd be a 10 to 1 increase in the money supply, like that. A couple of trillion dollar increase in the money supply. They don't want to do that. They don't want to acknowledge there's a problem here with fractional reserve banking to begin with, so they don't talk about it. So at any rate, what would happen if uh, this seems like a hard situation? You know, the positives will go through the ringer, indeed. Uh, take that radical stance. However, look, look, look at the great thing about it. If you, if you allow the the uh, savings loan banks to go bankrupt and allow the depositors to take the bath, one, it would relieve the taxpayers of 200 billion dollars or more of new taxes or new inflation, or however they're going to hugger mugger this. And two, our beloved depositors and savings and loan people will learn a valuable and instructive lesson. <laughs> Namely, never trust the government again. <laughs> it's very similar to the foreign debt question. If there's foreign debt piling up in Brazil and Argentina and other places, what to do about it at home? What to do about it? Just don't write it off. Okay? Which means the Brazilian taxpayers don't have to be fleeced some more, the American taxpayers don't have to be fleeced some more. 
and uh, the banks will finally en en engage in some honest accounting, which means they'll go under. <laughs> so this is uh, the thing. It's a radical line, but it's a cleansing kind of thing. It's an honesty applied to, to American politics for the first time in a long, long time.